Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Let's start with the what is what are the auto encoders. We have the different type of auto encoders like based on the overall the concept will remain the same. And uh, the only thing is that uh, they they change the layers in between and uh, sometimes the requirement is also different. So based on these things, they little bit tweak the network, but the basics of the network will remain the same. So if you talk about the auto encoders, the auto encoders neural network is a unsupervised machine learning algorithms that applies the back propagation and try to set the target variable equal to the input variable means that what they are getting is they are just taking the as usual they are taking first of all these are the unsupervised machine learning so when we have the unsupervised so one thing pretty clear is that we don't have the labels we have the simple data and then the next thing is then the next thing is that we have a input we have a input and we construct some output and now our main objective is that the this output should be equal to the input this is my main objective so this we have in this auto encoders and as it is the unsupervised machine learning why because we don't have the label data if you talk about the benefits, autoencoders are used to reduce the size of your inputs into the smaller representation. So as I mentioned that it is also performed the dimensional to reductions. The way that a PCA is done, definitely it is different from the PCA. So it is also used for the dimensional to, re dimensional to reductions means that I have a data in the, huge, in, in the, the large dimension and now I'm going to reduce into the lower dimension. And then if anyone needs the original data, they can also reconstruct it from the compressed data. First, I will show you the working of the autoencoder. If you talk about the working of the autoencoder, how the things work is, in the traditional autoencoders, or you can say that the, the autoencoders, we are passing a input data. We perf we, this is my input layer. We pass the input. Input can be image, video, or the audio then we have the encoder and this encoder would create a feature vector this encoder reduce the size or you can say that this features or the feature vector is nothing but the compressed form of my input so what encoder will do is encoder will encode the image into the compressed form we call it as a vector form or we call it as a feature vector or the context vector. Then after that, decoder work start. Decoder take this feature, which is a vector or a complex, compress representation of my input. And this takes as an input and try to construct the image. So we have the X and we got the X prime. And now, our objective is that based on this X, I want to the, the, the image that I constructed or the output that I constructed, I want to reduce the loss of X minus X prime. X is my original and X prime is my reconstructed. It can be image, audio and other things also. Now the question comes that why we need the autoencoders? What are the like, uh, as I mentioned that earlier, we have the a PCA which is reducing the dimensionality. But we found that in the PCA, PCA is only doing the linearity dimensionality reduction. If your data is, is not linear uh, present, or it may be a scenario where her you need to perform the non-linear representation, which is very, very uh, uh, 
common in the case of video image or the series data. In this case, what we are doing is we are using the auto encoders which transform my data into the lower dimension. Okay. So now if I talk about that how it uh, how a image compression things work, how a image compression things work. So first it will take the image and put some kind of a convolutional operations. We have the different different type of auto encoders. I'm taking about a I'm talking about a encoders which is used which takes which is useful for the image. It will take a one image as an input, perform the multiple convolutional operation, and you also have seen that it last in the flatten operations we have a vector, and this vector is nothing but the representation of your image. I'm not using the multiple features map. I'm just reducing the size of this image and get a compress input image and we call this feature vector as a bottleneck. After this bottleneck, we will perform some kind of a, uh, a technique to, to take the main features without losing the information from the image. And then after that, I will reconstruct this image into with the lower dimension or with the features and remove the unnecessary noise. Okay, so these are the some examples that we have. So we have the we use the multiple layers in the encoders based on the requirements. We use the multiple layers which convert into the features and reconstruct the output. Why we need the encoders? One example, as I mentioned, that we can use the encoders for the dimensional to reduction. The another example is that you can use for the recommendation engines as well. I will show you the a, a small example that how we can use the auto encoders for the recommendations. We can use the auto encoder for the feature extractions, and we can also use the auto encoders for the image recognition. If we talk about the application of the auto encoders, this is the one of the example. We have a black and white picture, and we can reconstruct a a picture, a, 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 a colorful picture. And here, if you see these things, first the thing, if if I talk about the things like how it works, so the thing is that first of all, we train the model on colorful pictures. So if I if I talk about that how the things are working. So I train the model on colorful pictures like uh, okay this area is this is a tree so so the stem will be dark in color then we have green leaves we have a grass which is kind of a green here some kind of a yellow here then some body which is in the blue color and then after that once my model is enough trained on this data so the main objective is to extract the features and this is what my generative model used to do if you talk about the last definition which I given for the generative AI, so generative AI is nothing but they are extract the features and the next time when we have to construct a similar kind of a object, we will use these features to construct this image. So the same thing is happening here. We have the image, we train the model on multiple images and reconstruct the same images and once my model we found that my model is enough intelligent to to reconstruct the same image then i will pass the then i will pass the black and white image as my model is trained on the colorful image so my model keep the features and convert and reconstruct the output as per the colorful image so this is how a black and white pictures converted into the colorful image and you also have seen uh, many examples also over the internet and maybe uh, maybe you also have seen uh, uh, I can remember that like there was some movie which was a black and white movie and uh, with the help of the this auto encoder technique or deep learning technique they convert this movie into the colorful image 
colorful uh, colorful uh, uh, video and how they are doing is they were taking the frame by frame and passing this frame to the auto encoders the next example is that feature variation if i talk about this one is you also have seen like uh, many photoshop activity are there which can remove the flash or any any kind of a noise from the images you all this is the next examples where you can take a a image you can pass a image using uh, you, you can pass your image having some noise noise in the form of the blurness noise can be in the form of the patch and uh, then you can pass this information to the encoder and then we will get a your bottleneck layer or you can say that your compress image in this compress image we design in such a way that it can keep the features of the image and uh, remove the noise and once we have this only features of the image and we have uh, removed the noise we can reconstruct the image and this is how my image looks like so this we call it as a feature variation again this is a again a behind the scene the, the core concept will remain the same uh, this is again a application where we are using the some kind of a CNN architectures to just create this thing, remove the feature, keep the features only because CNN architecture we use for the feature extractions. As we need the keep the feature extractions here, so in this auto encoder we will use the CNN architectures and then after that keep the features in the dense form and the reconstruct the image. Next is your dimensionality reduction. This is what I was talking about with the help of uh, in the in the in the case of the WhatsApp. I mentioned that like in the when you click a picture through your mobile, you also have seen that the picture is always in the size of 1 MB, 2 MB, 10, 5 MB as well. And now you can just when you upload this picture to the WhatsApp and download this picture, it always remain around 30 or 40 KB. Or in the market also, in the market also, we have uh, some tools which can reduce the thing. So this is nothing but the concept of the dimensionality reductions. We use the auto encoder as a dimensionality reduction without changing my features. There are some applications and uh, auto encoder is a kind of a, I will call it as a like GAN. We have seen that in the GAN we have the discriminator, generator, and we are just uh, competing each, uh, each other and based on this architecture we found the multiple GAN architectures like DC GAN, cycle GAN and other type of GAN. Same thing is also here in the auto encoders. In the case of the auto encoders as I mentioned that concept is remain the same. The only difference is that the way that you are using based on the your use we are doing some modification in the concept and uh, get the output. So we, we tweak some things and we have some different type of auto encoders also and we will also discuss about that how the things get changed based on the type of the auto encoders. The next application is denoising of image. You also have seen that again uh, you have seen that if you talk about many uh, uh, applications where like you have the text data maybe like like you have a printout you have a you have an image of a, a your handwritten notes but that paper was uh, twisted and now it created some kind of a noise in your image similarly you also have seen that in the old pictures if you want to take a printout of the old pictures you have some kind of a noise there so so this is also a, a technique uh, where we can use the auto encoder to convert my image to the first compressed image, compressed representation and then 
only extract the feature from the image and this is my final output so this is again a example the next example is watermark removal you also have seen this applications um, uh, over the internet as well like for example uh, when you are taking a pictures or when you are doing any kind of a modification uh, they they add some watermark like for example if you are taking your phone you, you are taking a picture from your phone so from your uh, some kind of like uh, oneplus or apple so they they on the right hand side sometimes they add the watermark or maybe if you are doing any modification on a website they add the watermark from on this image so, but you don't need the watermark right so if you want to do this kind of activity so again you can use the again you can use the your auto encoders so these are the few application of the auto encoders thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today